Welcome back to The Naked Connection. This is the show that helps you reach sexual mastery and build deep connections. What's up, everybody? This is Kirsten. And in this episode, I am going to share four perspectives to support you in rebuilding after a breakup. So whether you're fresh out of a relationship, maybe you know someone who's going through a breakup themselves, or You know, you might even be single and subtly are avoiding a new relationship or just dating in general because you don't want to get hurt again. This episode is for you. There is so much advice out there about getting over someone and a lot of it, frankly, it hurts you more than it helps you. Like, oh my gosh, that age old saying, in order to get over someone, just get under someone else. And uh, spoiler alert. That is not a piece of advice that I'm going to be sharing today, okay? Because that does not actually work. So let's get into it. The four perspectives that will actually help you get over your ex and move on. I actually started this podcast in the midst of healing from a breakup myself, I had been in a relationship for a couple of years with a really amazing man, and it didn't work out for a number of reasons. It was one of those situations where I think the hardest no is the one that's the closest to a yes. And so the relationship ending came with a lot of a lot of pain and sadness and emotions for me. And so I had to spend a lot of time really reflecting. And I wanted to share what created a source of support and comfort and peace for myself through the process with you so that hopefully if you're going through something similar, if you're going through a breakup of your own, or if you know someone that's going through a breakup, that this will be helpful, that this will help you be able to get over an ex and help you be able to move forward and have the relationship and the love and the life that you want. In in the process, you know, it's really interesting because I think people in your life want to help you and share with you things that are going to make you feel better. And sometimes that can be really helpful. And sometimes it can be just absolute freaking garbage (laughs) because we say what we want to say to help someone feel better. And sometimes that isn't always the thing that's going to help move the needle, the thing that's going to help us the most. It's maybe comforting, sure, but it isn't necessarily the truth. Or it isn't necessarily something that's going to actually help you grow and change and get out of the place that you're in. So I have these four perspectives that I'm really excited to drop in with you about. And some of them are painful. Some of them are not going to be what you want to hear. So you better freaking stick around and hear them. But okay, okay, let's get into it. The truth is a breakup does not break you. You are not broken your ex is not broken. In the wise words of Annie Lala, she talks about how a relationship ending is actually a graduation. You're graduating from that relationship. Think about being in high school. Some people skipped a grade and graduated early, but most most of the time when you graduate, it's because you've reached a completion. You've done all of the coursework. You've met all of the requirements. And now being in high school no longer serves you. Being in getting that eighth grade graduation <laughs> certificate, I don't think I ever had that, but I know people that did. That was what they needed in order to move on to the next step. Like there was a celebration in the ending of that. And I'm not like I'm saying you necessarily want to or need to celebrate the ending of a relationship. Maybe that's actually a really beautiful way to look at it. But We all have graduations and you're graduating from your relationship. You leave a job that no longer suits you and you're not broken. You leave high school and you're not broken. You're just moving on to a different part of your life. And so why can't we look at relationships in the same way? That was not even the perspective that I was going to offer, but that's now it's technically five perspectives. So here we are. Uh, So just as we go through today's episode and I'm sharing the four things that have really, truly helped me. And moving forward from my most recent relationship, starting off with this concept that you really are not broken, that you really are whole. And if anything, you might be more whole than you ever were before. So let's have a little pep talk. Let's get our juices going. Let's believe in ourselves. Let's feel better because you deserve to be happy. 
You deserve to be loved and you deserve to be in a healthy relationship that you are super excited about that is a full fuck yes for you. So the first perspective that I want to share is all about exploring modes of connection that you had in the relationship. So this one's really powerful if you and your ex are handling the breakup very differently. So maybe your ex is taking this really hard and you're like, she's crying all the time. She's still contacting me. She wishes we could get back together. And you're over here being like, it really wasn't that big of a deal. I actually feel really good about things. What's the disconnect here? Or maybe the flip side, maybe you're the one that is really upset. Like, how are you moving? How is your ex moving on so quickly? How were they able to just a few weeks later be with someone else? And you're sitting at home eating bonbons and crying all day. What is happening here? Why is it so different? Well, there are six different ways that I have come to find people create connections. And the number of connections that you've experienced within that relationship is going to determine how easy or how hard it is for you to actually break up and move forward. So the six modes of connection are physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, communal, and yes, financial. So I'm going to give a little bit of a breakdown about what each of these modes might look like. So the first is physical. This one's pretty obvious. Touching, sex, intimacy, sensual touching, cuddling, kissing, holding hands, PDA, all of the physicalness that comes with being in a partnership with someone. Someone might have really felt physically connected to you. And someone might have been like, it was okay. (laughs) I connected with them in other ways. Like maybe they weren't physically as attracted to the other person. There's always like a little bit of a level of difference. So looking at were you physically connected to this person and were they physically connected to you? Then the second is emotional. Did you share your feelings? Did you connect with them? Did you have like a deep level of intimacy where perhaps you felt their soul or you felt who they are, the essence of who they were, and that really binded you to them and also them to you? Sometimes some people can be really emotionally connected to someone and the other individual hasn't shared, they haven't expressed, they haven't been able to build that deep connection intimately with you. They were there while you were building that part for yourself, but maybe not on the other side for them. Then there's spiritual. So whether you're religious or not, just taking into account whether in the relationship you experienced practices that were spiritual or religious together, were there aspects of your life where you came together? Maybe some people might think of it like they went to church together. They had the same religious beliefs that they talked about and shared in, or did you share soulful connections or experiences. You know, sometimes if you're traveling or if you're at a moment in life where you experience like something really profound together, that can bind you in a very unique way. Then there's communal. So building family and friends within the relationship, you know, did you pull them in to your community? Did you pull them into your friend group? Did they become an integral part of your family? Or did you keep them at a distance? Was there a separation between your relationship and between their community, their friends, their family? Then looking at mental, intellectually stimulated. Were you connecting on a mental level where perhaps you were having deep conversations about things that you cared about? Did they challenge you? Did they support you? What was going on kind of from a more cognitive perspective, I guess you could say. And then finally, people I think do not like hearing this one, but it's true. It's just a fact. Financial support. Like, are you, are you financially connected? And this can look like, yeah, sure. Maybe if you're in a marriage and one person had an income and then you separate, and now suddenly this individual has no financial support from you. Like, what does that look like? And it doesn't even necessarily have to be monetary in nature. It could be, did they provide for you? You know, did they support you? In a lot of different ways. So ask yourself, what was the relationship for you in terms of these six modes? And what was the relationship for your ex in terms of these six modes? The less connection points, the easier it's going to be for you to move on. And I think the difference here is that let's say that you had two connection points. Let's say that you connected with your partner physically and communally. You loved their friends and family and you were super physical with them. Meanwhile, 
your ex was like, I'm spiritually connected to this person. I'm financially connected to this person. I mentally, like they are feeling, checking all of the boxes. It's going to be a lot harder for that person to move on than the person that just has a few modes of connection. And I think that when we can start to understand where the discrepancy comes from, it makes it a lot easier to have a different perspective and to look at this situation and the dynamic and know, oh, first of all, they just had a different experience in the relationship than I did. And that doesn't necessarily say that there's something wrong with you or wrong with them. Just because someone didn't connect with you in one of these ways doesn't necessarily say something about you. It totally, like it totally can. No, I I think for example, let's say that someone wasn't emotionally connected to you and you were emotionally connected to them. They might just not be able to emotionally connect with anybody. Or maybe emotional connection is just not important to them. Let's say that communal connection is just not important. Like they just don't feel the need to integrate their partner into different parts of their lives or they don't feel drawn to connect with their partner's friends. And that's just not a value for them. It doesn't necessarily say something about you. I will say like if your friends are garbage, that might say something about you. But I think the point that I'm trying to get across here is that when you can understand why or how someone experienced the relationship the way that they did, it makes it a lot easier to understand when there's a discrepancy in the way that people are experiencing and navigating the breakup. One other thing in terms of this, this is totally just reminded me off topic about the timing of things. If you're going through a breakup and you are knee deep in it, like the day after the breakup ends, you're really processing it. You're feeling all the feelings. You're feeling mad. You're feeling sad. You're having all of these desires, these angers, like this expression, and you're moving through it and you're self-reflecting and you're processing it in real time, immediately after. That's going to look different than someone who numbs out and processes it three to six months later. That doesn't mean that that person isn't experiencing the breakup. It just means that they're going to experience it in a different way at a different point in time. So keep in keeping in mind that. And let me just tell you, the reason I'm sharing all of these things are because these are things that I've literally had to think about myself in terms of breakups that I've gone through. So you are not alone, my friend. The second perspective that I want to share is really helpful if you were in a toxic relationship, an unhealthy relationship, or maybe a relationship that left you feeling really exhausted all the time. So this could be something where perhaps, you know, you had more anxiety than you did peace in the dynamic, more distress than comfort. You know, I I once was actually, this is years ago, I was in a relationship like this and looking back, if I thought about staying with that person for the rest of my life, I would have been chronically exhausted. And so if that is something that resonates with you, when you think about your ex or the relationship that you just left or were in, this perspective is going to be so helpful. Oh gosh, my therapist told me this and it was a really gigantic pill to swallow. She told me that everyone is replaceable. Yeah, that's hard to hear. It's so hard to hear. You're probably like, what? I'm not replaceable. How could I be replaced? I'm amazing. And yes, you are. (laughs) You are amazing. And in so many ways, incredible. And sometimes is that being replaced is actually amazing. And hear me out. Hear me out for a sec, because let's say this, if your ex had placed a giant wall up against your back, just put all this weight on you, all of their needs, all of their demands, all of their desires, they put all of that up against you and you're holding it up, right? You're in the relationship, you're feeding the wall, you're holding the wall up. It's tiring. And how nice for you to be able to step away from that job and how unfortunate for the next person who now has to hold that wall up. I think that we live in this lens that no one could ever replace us. And I get that. But I think that when we live in that, with that mindset, we put a lot of limitations on the other person and on ourselves and on the relationship. Sure. Maybe the wall that 
you have or the wall that your partner has is actually really small and isn't really – this isn't like the Leaning Tower of Pisa here. It's just like at a one-degree tilt. It's going to be different than if the relationship was really heavy and really hard. That wall was about to go over if you didn't hold it up. In those moments, I think it's really a gift to be able to be replaced. When my therapist said that to me, a part of me died inside. <laughs> What I ended up having to do was really reflect on why did I feel this need that no one could ever replace me? Why did I feel like I could be the only one? And it's a really humbling moment and also a really freeing moment because it opens you up to so much more possibility within your love life and within just life in general. So Again, it's like we we make these weird, weird things and thoughts and beliefs around relationships. If you had a job that you didn't really like every day you went to work, it felt off. It felt unaligned for you. You cared about everybody at work. You like wanted to do a good job. You were working really hard. You were getting exhausted, but something just always felt off. Or maybe you felt like they were like not paying you what they should have been or whatever have you in the analogy. Eventually, you're going to find a new job. Eventually, you're going to quit and take a sabbatical. Eventually, you're going to save up enough money where you can safely leave and not look back at the new hire and be mad at them, right? (laughs) You're going to be like, thank you. I hope that this is your dream job. And you're going to leave the company happy to leave. And, and so why can't we look at relationships the same way? Like, What if we looked at them the same way? Because in that case, you would actually want someone to take your place. You'd be like, please let them hire someone that's more fit for this job. I'm going to go find a job that's more aligned for me. And there's a celebration in that. There's a joy in that. It doesn't have to be like, oh, because this job wasn't right for me, I can never work it again day in my life. No, it's not a thought that goes through people's minds. But for some reason it is when we think about love and relationships. So I would offer for a moment to look at it from that different place. Kind of fun to do. Just try it on. See if it fits. See how it see how it lands on your body. Okay, the next perspective. Perspective three. Character is constant. I think about this when it comes to that moment in a breakup, when you think to yourself, what if they change for someone else? We've all had those moments where you think about the fact that maybe all of the problems and all of the struggles and all of the issues that you had with this person in this relationship, what if they choose to never do that again with anyone else? God, there have been so many times where I hear people talk about how, oh, you know, after me, they turned around and were this great person. And I always wonder, are you sure about that? Are you sure that they're actually a different person now? From the outside, maybe it looks that way, but we don't really know anymore because you're no longer in the jar with that person. How someone is with you is how they are going to be with other people. If that's not the case, then I don't think there's someone to trust. Like, would you want to be friends or business partners with someone that acted a certain way with you and then turn around and acted like a completely different person with your clients, with your customers, with your other friends? And actually, this is something that I had to learn because there was a point in time where I dated someone that treated me really sweetly, was so kind, and then would get in these like really bad engagements with strangers, with coworkers, with friends. And I witnessed it a few times and I thought to myself, okay, he he doesn't do that with me, but there's no reason that he won't in the future. Like how someone is with other people, you can bet that one day they're going to be that way with you. Just statistically speaking here, I mean, I'm not a statistician. However, I think that if they're engaging with the world that way, they're going to eventually engage with you that way. It's just a matter of time. So how someone is with you is how they will be with other people. And in terms of a relationship, how they were with you is likely how they're going to be with their next person. And eventually, and and if they're not, let's say that they enter into a new relationship and they really truly are different. 
eventually the truth of who they are will come out. And if that new person that they're with never chooses to see that truth, like that's on them to manage. That's not your responsibility to worry about. And sometimes it can be really hard to let go of that, but it's really freeing when you do, when you say, Hey, if that, if that ex, if that girl chooses to still be insanely like micromanaging Let's say that they were really micromanaging with you and then they leave, they go and be with someone else. And in the beginning, they're not. And then slowly, they probably will become micromanaging again. And maybe that person loves being micromanaged, right? Like maybe they loved that. Maybe they loved that about being in a partnership with with someone and they were looking for that and now they got it. And even, or maybe they weren't and they're like being micromanaged is horrible, but guess what? You don't have to worry about that anymore. How freeing is that? I think we put these weird thoughts and expectations on ourselves about situations that we shouldn't have to worry about. Like, what are we doing to ourselves? Do you ever wonder about that? Like, why? (laughs) Why am I putting emphasis on this when I will never actually have to worry about it? Weird. Me might be thinking like, whoa, whoa, whoa. People never change. Come on, Kirsten. That's not true. And I totally agree. I totally believe that it is possible to change and that your character can change. Even though I just said character is constant, there is a caveat to this. And it is that if someone was actively working on changing who they are when they were with you, if they were putting in the reps, if they were putting in the effort to change and shift and grow, then yeah, they might actually shift in the future. But let's say that you went up to them and you told them 17 times something that bothered you and nothing ever changed the likelihood of them suddenly making a shift now is pretty small. I mean, we can hope that that would happen, but for the betterment of your well-being in the moment of managing the breakup, I think it's a lot more settling to take the perspective that who they are now is who they're going to be tomorrow, unless they were in this massive transformation when you were together. So the final perspective to help you navigate and get over a breakup is this. Anyone who doesn't choose you isn't your home. Again, might be a little bit of an ouchie to hear, but keeping someone with you who's making you unhappy isn't going to make you happier. You have to have faith in the vision of the relationship and the future that you desire and what that looks like for you and move towards it. Because a relationship that isn't based on your values, your vision, your standards, your beliefs isn't something worth keeping and it isn't something worth staying in. It isn't a home that you want to decorate. You want to be in that Airbnb and get in and get out. (laughs) So unless it's a relationship where you have truly deep values and standards that are matching, that isn't your home to stay in long term. Or that was your vacation riddle. (laughs) I'm coming with some really weird analogies today, you guys. You really have to have faith. And it's actually better to let go of something than to hold on to something that isn't aligned for you. Sure, staying in the known can feel a lot easier and more comfortable than moving into the unknown. And it can be hard to do that. But oftentimes, I'm a I'm a believer in manifesting and visioning and and all of the laws of energy. I think that when you take a stand for yourself and you say this is not the type of relationship, this is not the type of person that I want to be with, and I know that this vision and this type of person is what I want and I'm going to make a claim and I'm going to stand for that and I'm going to take action on that by getting out of this one and moving into the deep unknown. You're basically putting up a massive billboard for the universe to bring you exactly what you want. And that is way more powerful than staying in something that is meh. Consider that. Consider taking that leap and moving into the unknown. It can be really easy to look at a relationship and start to hyper-focus on all of the good things. And there's so much beauty in that and so much value in that because how you leave a relationship is often how you enter a new one. If you can find the beauty and the good and the appreciation and the growth that you had and the experiences and the love that you shared and hold on to that, that's really beautiful. And also, we do this thing actually scientifically, they have a term for it. It's called the rosy perspective where we, 
as humans, tend to look back on memories and see them better than they were. We tend to look back and see the good more than the bad. And this rosy perspective can really impact the way that we move forward from a relationship. Because if we're forgetting all of the bad, it's harder to move forward. When I when I heard about this rosy perspective, it made me think about actually how when when our bodies are so crazy, by the way, but when women give birth, there's actually this hormone that pumps through their body afterwards that helps them forget the pain that they experienced during childbirth so that they want to have a baby again. So their body actually forgets the pain that they experienced in order to help them want to have more children. Like we are just wild to procreate, okay? <laughs> so I think about that in terms of a breakup. It's like, what? I don't think there's a hormone that goes to our body with the rosy perspective. Maybe there is, but it's like something is going through us that's pushing us to see the good. And I think you should see the good. And you should also not forget the reasons that you left in the darkest moments when you were alone, or maybe when you went on that first date and it was really horrible. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, did I make a mistake? Why did I do this? Maybe they were the run. Maybe they, maybe I should go back to them. Maybe I should see if they're still available. Like maybe I made a big mistake, blah, 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 blah. In those moments, recalling the reasons why you ended things or why Maybe they ended things and you were able to figure out in reflection why that was. Pull that up into your mind and use that as a reminder of why you're moving forward, of why you're stepping into the unknown, of why you are choosing a new love and a new opportunity and a new possibility. One thing that I do is I actually put together a note in my phone in the notes app where I listed out the reasons why our relationship ended. And in those dark moments, in those quiet moments, when I was feeling sad, when I was wishing things were different, I would go open it up and I would turn to it and say, that's right. This is why this is no more. And then when I felt complete in that, I would go to a different note on my phone where I had listed out and built this beautiful vision of the relationship that I want, of the type of partner that I want. And I would connect with that and be like, that's right. I'm on track. This is the vision that I want. This is the vision that I have. So you can go from this is why things ended to this is what I'm moving towards. So get out there, explore the unknown, be willing to step into something new and come back to this. You know, whenever you need a moment to feel supported, to recall why you are in the place that you're in to feel not alone in the breakup process. I think sometimes it can feel really isolating when you're going through a breakup and I want to be here for you. I don't want you to have to go through this breakup by yourself. And sometimes our friends can say really loving things and sometimes our friends can say really shitty things. And sometimes we turn to turn towards people that are going to tell us just whatever it is that we want. And I don't want to be that way. I want to be able to actually share with you something that will hopefully be able to support you to expand and grow and change and to understand yourself and to understand your partner and to understand the relationship that you were in better than before. I hope that this has been really, really helpful. I love sitting down and having just little chats in my bedroom on the floor with you as we move through this beautiful, beautiful life. So if you know someone that's going through a breakup or if you know someone that might benefit from this, please share this episode. And until next time, be sure to get out there and get after it. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The Naked Connection. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another episode. Trust me on this, your sex life and that special someone in your life will thank you for it. And if you really love the show, please take a moment and leave a five-star review or a written review and let me know what you think. It would mean so much to me and the show. Until next time, happy connecting.